So calorie restriction then, would calorie restriction, I think I saw you in another talk, you mentioning calorie restriction should minimize this effect. The more calories you eat, the probably the greater likelihood of having uh, proteases leak into the blood. In, in the simplistic way, when you reduce your calorie input, you eat smaller meals, and therefore the damage to the intestine with every meal that you eat is reduced. Timed eating is, is another example like this. If you eat uh, nothing over a certain period of time, that allows your mucosa barrier to repair itself. That, by the way, is always in repair. It's the, the intestine is the organ with the highest gene expression. And the, uh, the, the, it takes about a couple of days to fully restore an intestine, uh, intestinal villus. But there are plenty of stem cells in the submucosa, and gastroenterologists study this at great detail. There's a constant repair mechanism. In my, from my point of view, is uh, how can somebody survive a severe ischemia where the entire length of the uh, villus is now reduced? All you need in order to have a functioning intestine is you have to uh, close the villi. They don't have to be very long. If they're very long, they can absorb, of course, more nutrients. But if they're relatively short, as long as they seal, they protect you from your own digestive enzymes. So that then raises the interesting question of, so after eating, uh, I guess it, you could quantify this, right? Where depending on your calorie intake and maybe even protein uh, uh, intake levels, there'll be some magnitude of auto digestion that would require some amount of time after eating where you don't eat for the villi and everything else to repair itself. Um, but no, do you have any insight to what that window may be? The, the no, the, the answer is, is I can only speculate on circumstantial evidence. Um, the good news I have is we have now developed a technology that allows you to measure proteolytic activity in a blood sample, a whole blood sample. Um, this is an effort together with a fellow by Mike Heller who is a retired professor at UCSD uh, and interested in nanoengineering. And we have now a technology that indeed you can take a blood sample, it's very small, uh, a finger prick, to measure the activity with these fluorescent units. And these are experiments that are ongoing, but I can tell you that uh, animals at risk or humans at risk uh, have an elevated proteolytic activity. And this is, uh, again, it's transient. These are not just steady state value. You can think of it like a glucose value. Uh, you measure one glucose value, it doesn't teach you a lot. You have to really follow the time course. Same with uh, digestive enzyme. So is that escape that you're asking for, is that a time-dependent phenomenon? No question in my mind. But... Um, the exact time when the barrier opens with a particular meal and the particular constituents of a meal and the time when uh, it's been repaired, that time course is of such importance for all these uh, timed eating experiments. That needs to be measured. And then these uh, uh, timed eating experiments can be really based on a rational basis. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so for example, uh, mice that are 40% calorie, calorie restricted, they live about 30% longer. And uh, they eat basically uh, triple their food on a Friday and then fast Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And that's in association with that lifespan extension. So clearly that one day of having triple calories can't be that bad from the auto digestion point of view because they've got two days, I guess, to repair it. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about uh, seeing the you know more specific detail